Monday state is the 11th of the 11, 11th and uh, at 11 o'clock there'll be a two minute silence. We're uh, delighted to have with us Claire, who's a military wife, whose uh, husband is a senior officer and a Chinook pilot. And he's been out to Afghanistan a few times, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us. You uh, you have a blog called A Modern Military Mother. Yes, that's right, yes. Well, welcome to the show. Thank, thank you very you. much. Today, a, 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 a very special day. We're going to take a quick look at the front page just before we uh, find out what's on your mind as far as the papers go. Clear front page of the Daily Mirror. Fee fighters, rioting thugs, run amok at Uni March. Wounded officers show their injuries after battle of control mob. Uh, the Guardian says this is just the beginning. Tory HQ attacked as fees protest. Uh, spirals out of control. Police caught out by scale of action. Uh, both sides warn more of this to come. The Times newspaper, thuggish and disgraceful. Yard chief condemns student demonstration. 32 arrested, says the Times. There's now 35 as fees protest turns violent. And uh, we're going to start, though, with uh, The Guardian with you. We want to start with uh, the Al-Qaeda bomb. Yeah, well, as today is Remembrance Day, actually, I, actually, I was thinking of renaming it to Realisation Day because I was hoping that would be a good opportunity to everyone to realise that we are actually at war at the moment in Afghanistan and our nation is at war and I'd like, you know, people to kind of get behind us, our troops a bit more. So I... I Do you feel that people aren't then? No, I don't think they are. I think a lot of people don't even know that we're at war or even why we're there or what we're doing there, what is the purpose of us being there, and what does success look like? How do we win this conflict? I don't think people even think about that. But there are a lot of people that say, even though they're anti the war, that they're very, they support the troops. So there's sort of, there's that dichotomy, isn't there? Yeah, but how can you support the, the troops if you don't understand what they're trying to achieve? Because troops are all about success and achieving the mission. That's, they, they're a government asset. They're sent to, um, conflict zones to achieve success that's what their end goal is and if you don't know what success looks like how can you support them I mean, one of the problems in this conflict particularly in afghanistan is it does seem sometimes that what they regard as success not for the military but from the politicians point of view changes because for example there was this whole thing about combating al-qaeda they're now in operation also in pakistan and pakistan doesn't seem to be doing its bit according to some people to monitor that and also the afghani election results are still suspended of allegations of ballot box stuffing and yet we're meant to be there promoting democracy so it's sometimes quite difficult to get our heads around what would be success well i think the people should demand to know what does success look like and how can success be achieved and i don't think we're asking those questions that's you mean of the government you're saying the government when, when have we won this to your satisfaction when can we withdraw the troops well what is success i mean i don't even think we should talk about withdrawal at this stage i think we should be much more interested in what is victory how do we achieve victory because i think ultimately everybody wants some sort of victory and what does that victory look like and i don't think that has been articulated like you say i mean we were in there because of a bond agreement to stabilize the country but i don't think anyone really understands what does stabilization mean and afghanistan is a very complex place and it isn't a simple solution so the reason I picked The Guardian on page three then, just to sort of bring it to point, was that this, I think, illustrates why we are in Afghanistan, really, is because Afghanistan was a safe haven, safe haven for al-Qaeda, and that's originally why they went in, was to rid the Taliban, who were supporters of al-Qaeda. And I think this really shows that this is still an issue for us. This is still an issue for the Western world, because people are trying to still continue to do bomb plots. So I wanted to sort of raise um, attention to that as well sure and also of course the aftermath to the soldiers serving over there in this conflict is uh, featured in the independent yes yeah, quite a few papers have yeah. uh, talked about it's it the stress the return from afghanistan yeah i think i mean and again i think that's really important and i think that's what people don't realize is one of the ways that you decompress from conflict is to be able to talk about it now obviously how can you talk about uh, a conflict that's not being realized that's not being understood by your nation and actually they don't they i think soldiers want to come back and they just want to download they just want to release the information that's in them and that will help them release the stress but if they're not allowed to talk about it because everyone's got their heads buried in the sand how can they decompress exactly. there were a number of studies after the vietnam war which said that a lot of soldiers really suffered there because that was widely regarded as a very unpopular war by the american public so the soldiers felt not only were they coming back having been through hell in some cases but they weren't getting a sympathetic hearing because a lot of people were anti-war exactly and i think people need to be allowed to talk about it they need mm. to be allowed to articulate how they feel because obviously there's a degree of trauma involved in conflict that quite means, a big degree i would think yeah exactly but i also think britain as a nation is quite emotionally repressed and we don't support the the idea that we can talk about how we feel that's very un-british to talk about how we feel and what kind of response you get from your blog because you write a modern military mother 
what kind of feedback do you get from that? Um, I get quite a lot of sort of fascination, sort of looking, because the reason I started to write the blog was to demystify the situation a little bit, because a lot of people say to me, oh, I don't know how you do it, or, or you must have known what you were getting into before you got into it. And it, you know, I started writing the blog to say, well, this is how I do it. You know, I... Because you've got two young children, I've a boy, two, seven, and a little girl, two, is that Yeah, right? that's right, yeah. And, I mean, I just, I mean, I'm fairly... I'm quite used to... I am used to doing it to some extent. You know, you get used to... As, as your partner. But it must be, be um, heartbreaking saying goodbye every time. It must be. Well, we, to be honest, I we don't say goodbye. So we just we just pretend it's a normal day. So see you, see you later. See you later. And how long is later? Uh, it can be, I mean, because of the way that the Chinooks deploy, it can be between 12 weeks. It's not six months. It's not like, but it's more frequent. Um, so, it, you know, we did go through a period of doing eight weeks on, eight weeks off at one point, which was fairly full mm. on. But the thing is, is I respect his right to do his job and I give him the platform from which to go out to do his job to be the best that he can be. And what kind of questions does your, does your son ask now? Because he's seven, he, can, he must be able to begin to understand what's going on. Well, we just totally underplay it. I mean, we don't overplay it. To be honest, he does, Afghanistan is a word to him. It's not a place. It's you know, where daddy goes to work. Yeah, Bikini Bottom, that's a place. But Afghanistan... Now we'll go back into the papers yeah. uh, and the Telegraph, the whole uh, country file story. With yes, the country file case. I thought I'd bring this up because obviously I'm a complete feminazi as well as a modern military mother. So um, I just think it's really interesting. I'm really interested in this idea of um, the female community being segregated, that women tend to not support each other, whereas men, I think, and actually, interestingly, I'm an ambassador for the film Rashtapo, which is a documentary about war in Afghanistan, and one of the concepts of this film that came out of it is that men that don't like each other will die for each other, that there is this notion of brotherhood, which goes beyond how you feel about someone personally, and I think women as a community... Um, is there no sisterhood anymore, then? Well, I think women have to like women to support them. I, I think if you find it really difficult, and I think misogyny is kind of right. Well, for those who don't know, the allegation is uh, it's an industrial tribunal and the case is ongoing, but the, the then controller of BBC One, and I think he's still in position, but he's moving on to he's the moving to Channel 4, yes. Uh, was involved in the removal of some country file presenters, one in particular because she was too old and maybe not as telegenic as younger presenters. Now, uh, in her defence, Jay Hunt has actually said that actually that wasn't the case and it was a decision for the producers, although they may have talked about strategy, and Country Fire went from, I think, Sunday mornings to a primetime show. But there is really that sense. We've had a number of female broadcasters say, you know what, there's this, when you hit 35, 40 or whenever, you suddenly become an invisible person for we're, producers. We're not allowed to be fat, ugly or old. I mean, those are the, that's the reality. Women have to, we're sort of immortalised in this kind of Aphrodite culture. And, uh, you know, I think... We should be allowed, I mean, men are allowed to be fat, ugly and old. Successful men, there's a lot of ugly, fat, successful men out there. That Thank you. Finally, <laughs> 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 well, the I'm a celebrity lineup. We know we're not going to know for sure until the programme actually starts. There's always a lot of obfuscation. But Gail Porter's apparently pulled out. She's so they've got some out. Playboy bunny Play girl, girl bunny. turning up here, possibly. I mean, I just... I, I, Do you watch it? No, it's awful. And I just think this article is just an illustration of more awfulness. There so we go. Take you, take you for a breakfast of bugs then. Oh, my, that is my worst nightmare. Thank you for joining us, Claire, the military you, wife, of course, uh, author of the blog, A Modern Military Mother. This is BBC London 94.9, it's 7.58. <laughs>